the vlog. I actually thought that I'd pull all the tanks across for a bit of an intro but just putting that one tank on with the pipe work, never mind the electronics as well, uh, took a couple of minutes there so if I did all of it as an intro it'd be like half an hour long so what I want to do instead is take you down and show you how we're hooking these tanks up to the coolers. So if I bring you across you will see very clearly that of course first thing we have to do is connect up the cooling pipe work excuse me and this cooling pipe work runs to that chiller back there to provide cold glycol in on this section out at this section thus cooling the jacket and then of course we have to be able to operate the solenoid valve for that to happen I think that goes on there actually and uh, yeah there we go that solenoid valve as we know is controlled by the relays inside this little box here and it is this speaker cable as you can see we've got red and black on here for positive and negative and this speaker cable carries a 12 volt signal to this little blue uh, motorised valve at the back and as well as opening that valve to allow the glycol to flow into the tanks it also turns on the internal pump on the glycol chiller to start circulating otherwise the pump would be running constantly the glycol chiller's on all the time but the pump is off until of course we need it very simple and effective way of cooling down a relatively large fermenter. So what I have to do in the future, unfortunately, is strip off all the timber and banding and replace them ultimately with underfloor heating cable, which we did to fermenter number three over the way there, because that heats up a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire this cable in and then I think I'll take you into the pub and I'll show you what we got up to yesterday because I forgot the camera and uh, you'll see that we put some awards on the wall finally got some pictures up and what I need to do now is just uh, run some speaker cable funnily enough uh, around to the other side of the pub so we can have a little bit of music in there because at the minute the music's focused around the bar and not necessarily anywhere else. Before I go into the pub though however, I've pulled out one of these glycol chilli units, Maxi 310, Maxi 210, whatever it is, because the internal pump in this particular unit I thought was functional and had the minerals to do the job, but unfortunately it turns out I was wrong. So out of the five fermenters that we used for the first time last month, this was the only one that couldn't uh, live up to the job of cooling the beer down. So I think it was this one. We're about to find out if I pulled the wrong tank out anyway. So what the plan is, we are going to change out the internal pump with this cheap Chinesium eBay submersible and these are like seven quid on eBay for those of you who want to know the power then I believe this one it doesn't even say it on the box but I don't think there's a lot of wattage basically going into this so there we go this is relatively don't matter what plugs on it either by the way because we're going to be chopping that off relatively simple one it's got a 2.4 meter head 1800 litres per hour, it's the 20 watt. So this is the BKL 1800. If you're looking for these on eBay or Amazon, you really shouldn't be paying more than 10 or 15 pound for them. So all we're gonna do 
is basically hardwire this little thing into the chiller in replacement of the recirculation pump that's already in there. See, the recirc pump ain't really going to be pumping more than uh, kind of four foot above its head. And this has got to do a little bit more work than that. So we're going to stick this on and then on here we will jerry-rig our cooling pipe work and then we'll just stick that in and wire this up into the, exactly the same place as the internal pump was wired up because fortunately for us uh, the internal pumps on these are 240 as well 240 volt that is so there shouldn't be a problem in compatibility just dropped a screw there we go I'm going to show the old builder's crap there while I went and picked it up. I'm wearing a pair of old jeans for work today and they're, uh, they're a little bit big. Believe it, oh yeah I know. You wouldn't believe it, would you? So, here we are. Let's focus down on this a little bit. And you'll be able to see what we've got inside. So I do have videos, I do have videos on the channel explaining what everything is in here. But we basically have a cooling fan, um, a condenser, where the compressor condenses the cooling gas, whether it's Freon, 134A refrigerant, etc., compresses it into here or through here, where it loses its heat after being compressed. And then when it goes into the cooling coils in this section, it goes through something called an expansion valve, and that's where the gas is forced through a little tiny hole, or the liquid actually, it's compressed into a liquid at this phase. So the liquid is forced into a little tiny hole and it goes through what's known as a phase change into gas and as it expands it cools. Therefore as it cools it picks up the heat in the unit and releases it again back through the compressor. We've got a visitor. You're late. Yeah. <laughs> Right. It's a bit nippy. It is a bit nippy. It's slippery. Yeah. Are you painting again? No. Right, we'll come back to this in a minute. Right, let's get back on with the job. That uh, That's taken half a day, so what I've just done is uh, I've just had to take my mum to buy her a new phone, bless her, so I've put it on my contract so she doesn't have to worry about pay as you go stuff because that's, uh, that's the boat she's in. So, anyway, as I was saying, so we have obviously the uh, condenser, evaporator, compressor and uh, cooling fan and then this here is the little research motor that sits in the glycol bath and usually these are good enough to pump the beer up through maybe a uh, what would you call it um, a chilled beer font but unfortunately I don't think this one has got the minerals well the fuse is still intact so it must still be working but either way we've got um, a little chocolate block here so I'll just disconnect all this lot we'll take the pump off and then I'll show you, we'll cut back to when we've got the new pump installed and uh, we'll take it from there. So, we now have the pump wired into the neutral for the whole unit, the earth for the whole unit, and then the live goes out through this cable to the STC controller on the tank and then when that calls for the pump to turn on it comes back through this black wire here and turns on our now newly stated submersible pump which we're going to stick in the bottom of the uh, glycol reservoir and now I just need to find some type of little cap to 
put over the top here to cover this hole and we'll close the whole thing back up and shove it back under the unit down below. Well we might not get into the pub at this rate folks because I need to do a few other jobs before we go in there but fail that we'll go in tomorrow. One of the other jobs is I've obviously done a bit of a shufty in the workshop the past week or so. As you can see we've moved a lot of drawers over here and along that wall is where the chop saw used to be. In fact I want the chop saw along here so we can cut longer pieces by bringing them in through this door and we've got a good three or four meters from that wall to where the saw is going to reside so we can get longer lengths of timber and stuff in for future projects. So that means I've had to put together a new saw table and while I was at it I thought I'd put it on wheels, good idea, and uh, I'm also going to put a shelf into it as well. So Gemma and I did start this last week but I've actually kind of decided to change the design a little bit. So this is the box, the wheels go on the bottom underneath, this will be the top and then all I need to do is figure out exactly where I would like the drawers to go and I think if I stick them at about the 400mm mark or well not the drawers, it's going to be a shelf so if I stick the shelf at about 400mm that will leave me quite a lot of space in the bottom to install or store other tools such as like the uh, the Makita box that will slide in there nicely if we have that 400mm height so that's the plan I've just got a couple of support beams to put across there then we'll screw this shelf in which is on the table saw here yet to be cut to size this is all three quarter ply by the way then once we've done that I may even put together a couple of doors so we can close the front and make sure that all the tools that are stored in there do not get covered in dust. So what I've decided to do is take a little bit of wood glue and instead of making that a shelf at the top I think we're going to make it a drawer so I don't really have the time to be putting in uh, proper runners because I'd have to nip up to tool station to pick them up so instead we're going to fabricate a couple of kind of fake ones so a bit of wood glue a few brads in there and then what we're going to do is put another one on the top like that and that will allow the drawer to slide in and out and these will act as a drawer runner if you get me drift so I've cut a few more of these I'll just stick them on both sides and then we will get maybe a front brace on like that and uh, well that should that should tidy the whole shebang up so here we kind of have it, we've got the chop saw, the evolution chop saw here, as you can see we can use the side for resting uh, long timbers on and if required we can pull it forward just a touch and possibly even use this as a backstop to run along there as well. On this side where we've got this door because if we look along the sight line of the door you'll see that the saw is a little bit behind which is why we put it on wheels to pull it forwards it's not ideal but I'm trying to get the best out of the workshop that I can so what we do is we kind of pull it out to there and then if you look down this line here this line of sight you'll see that we've got a shot straight across from the base of the base plate and along there that can be adjusted of course and then to take up the slack from let's say long pieces of timber this side 
which are possibly going to be flapping around in the breeze, breeze, breeze. What I'm going to do is we're going to have another shelf here, and then uh, the top of the shelf is going to be on drawer runners, and we'll just pull it out forwards so it comes out to there like that, and then pushes back in out the way afterwards. And then all of that section along that side can actually be used for cutting timbers. You can see how much space I've got then across here, all this drawer sets across here, all the tail can cut a full sheet of plywood on here as well. So I've got 2.4 meters at least from my tool board to the front of the blade, maybe a little bit more actually. And then of course, when it's all not being utilized, we push the whole thing back to the wall and we pop the brakes on and there it stays. That's not a problem. I need to put some doors on the front of this section. So I'm gonna go doors on the bottom and we've got the drawer on the top. Now I've just used bits of scrap to put these sides up. Ideally they'd want to be full height so that we're not spilling things kind of over the side of the drawer, but for now that'll be fine. And then I've run out of three quarter ply for the front. I want to make it as heavy as possible so I am over engineering it a little bit. So I'll get another sheet of three quarters ply when I've got some time and we'll cut a drawer front and some doors and we'll put them on double doors on the front. And at the moment the idea of this little beauty was of course so I can store all of my uh, drill boxes and everything else in there out the way nice and neat. So if I just pop you on the tripod, you'll see we've got the Makita, the SDS, hopefully the toolbox will fit in there as well. Oh beautiful. So that's fantastic. So that really gets rid of a lot of junk basically that we've had in the brewery for a long time. And then this, that big drawer, this kind of looks ideal for the big chop saw and plane and everything else that we've got to store out of the way. So you can see how I got the drawer sliders to work. These two sections of plywood are sort of uh, glued and brad nailed to the side and then obviously the drawer pulls out in between them and then to make them slide a bit easier if they start to pull with a little bit of friction you can just run some candle wax on those runners you don't have to worry about hinges wearing out I've used it as well for the drawers on this side and quite frankly well slightly different but they open and close as you can hear like a dream well that's about all she wrote folks chance knows what time it is don't you buddy oh yes come on then let's go and get in that car right we're in the car folks and we've just arrived at home i'm sure you can hear chance in the background making a noise he wants to get out of the car and go in the house. I don't blame him because it is really cold. So before I do that, I just thought I'd uh, just have a moment with the camera and you guys and uh, just say a few words. I want to thank everybody, of course, for the support on the channel this year and everything like that as we're moving towards Christmas in December. Uh, I want to keep you guys all informed, though, that over the next month or so, the frequency of the vlogs is going to peter off somewhat. Uh, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. We're going to continue to make videos for YouTube, absolutely. They just might not necessarily be daily vlogs. I don't know if you saw earlier, uh, but the old queen, the mother, is uh, she's having to walk with a frame now. And uh, lung disease is pretty advanced and all that kind of stuff. So I want to spend more time doing things for her and uh, that kind of stuff and also we've got the run up to Christmas which means that we really are going to have to have a big push in the brew shed to kind of uh, make sure that everybody's Christmas celebrations run uh, to plan and of course Christmas is a big time for us in the pub and brewery trade so I've got a lot to concentrate on frankly 
So we may miss a video here or there, but please do not panic. As I said, I'm going nowhere and we'll be continuing to do the vlog well into next year and maybe even beyond. So thanks again, folks, for everybody who's really reaching out and supporting me, particularly you guys on Patreon. This is honestly... You are such a big reason why I continue to do these vlogs. You have no idea. And, uh, yeah, well, we'll see you on tomorrow's, folks. I suppose that's going to wrap it up. I'm going to go inside, put this vlog together, get it up on the internet, and we'll see you over the next couple of days, I imagine. Have a good one. Cheers.